U.S. Air Force is testing a massive next-gen B-1B Lancer with a hypersonic weapon. B-1B made another addition to its powerful arsenal by launching a stealthy cruise missile from an external pylon and it will help to launch hypersonic missiles in the future. In this video, we'll talk about the efforts of America to arm B-1B with hypersonic missiles. The B-1B Lancer wreaked havoc in the recent Afghanistan conflict, but it can't survive an encounter against a strong rival with a vigorous anti-air defense. You're going to want to stay till the end of the video because we're sharing how global powers, China and Russia, will be outperformed from this hypersonic weapon. Overview on B-1B B-1B is the backbone of every bomber America ever created, and it carries a massive payload of guided and unguided weapons in the inventory. It is capable to deliver missiles at a very fast rate and can outperform any other bomber in an encounter. B-1B had variable geometry wings and turbofan afterburning engines, the blend of which provides B-1B with exceptional maneuverability with an enhanced range and speed. It had forward wings that were utilized for takeoff, landing, air refueling, and to use some powerful weapons employment processes. The aft wings were used mainly for combat and during subsonic and supersonic flight that improved its maneuverability at both low and high levels. A combination of these capabilities with an excellent radar targeting system and survivability, B-1B is a complete package of destruction. The radar of B-1B is capable of tracking and engaging vehicles and planes by using a self-targeting system. It has an extraordinarily accurate GPS inertial navigation system that enables the crew to navigate without ground support and engage targets with extreme precision. It has a fully integrated data link, FIDL, with Link 16 capability, and it provides enhanced situation awareness. In a critical situation, the crew can utilize the data received from the command center and engage the threats rapidly. Do you know that the Air Force has already begun retiring many Lancers and only hypersonic weapons are their hope for revival? The external weapons carriage capability of B-1B will be revived so that new weapons would be accommodated. The plan to reactivate B-1B is already in progress and it will initially carry around a dozen subsonic AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Air -air Surface Standoff Missile JASSM, cruise missiles or AJM-158C missiles. Apart from this, 24 other weapons will fit in its internal bomb bays. The same weapons interface would be adapted for hypersonic missiles too. It won't be cheap with hypersonic weapons capabilities, and maybe the program will have to negotiate defense budgets so that it could prosper and stay intact. A lot of the costs will be consumed by reactivating the external hardpoints. They were once intended to carry nuclear weapons before the B-1B lost this role after the end of the Cold War. The pylons of the Lancer disabled were then disabled. B-1 was designed with eight external hardpoints, and six of them can be restored and utilized for hypersonic weapons. Each of these new load adaptive modular LAM pylons will be utilized to accommodate two missiles that were not specified. Another fact is that the external pylons on the B-1B could also carry two missiles each, and in that case, the nuclear-tipped AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile ALCM. The largest hypersonic missiles will weigh around 5,000 pounds and be more than 20 feet long. The names of the missiles were not specified, but specifications seem to be like the ARRW. On the other hand, the LAM pylons may also be intended to carry other more conventional weaponry. For example, the JASSM cruise missile and its derivatives. Recently, Air Force discovered a combination of external pylons and a common rotary launcher in the internal bomb bays. It could carry nearly 31 hypersonic missiles, but they plan to carry 12 hypersonic missiles. Before they launch such powerful weapons on B-1B, LAM has to prove themselves before captive carry trials of representative payloads could begin followed by the release of inert weapons, and finally, end-to-end -end testing. 
Have you ever wondered why B-1B was tested for two types of hypersonic weapons? B-1B must serve as a launch platform for two kinds of hypersonic weapons, which are boost glide vehicles and air-breathing missiles. The first category is boost glide vehicles, and it is referred to as AGM-138A, which is an air-launched rapid response weapon AARW. The missile utilizes a solid fuel rocket booster to attain hypersonic speeds, fitted with tail fins and an unpowered boost glide vehicle. After attaining some specific speed and altitude, the boost glide vehicle continues to its target at hypersonic speed. The second category is air breathing missiles, and it works on the hypersonic air breathing weapon concept, or HAWC. Another missile known as Hypersonic Attack Cruise Missile, or HACM, is another program that involves an air-breathing weapon and can be easily carried by the bomber or a fighter jet. But how would air-breathing missiles enhance the capabilities of the B-1B Lancer? Air-breathing hypersonic missiles help B-1B to carry more weapons as they are smaller and lighter than the boost glide vehicle counterparts. They help B-1B to fly deeper within the atmosphere to make a complicated target for enemy air defenses, but they are traded by weapons with a decreased range and speed. The outstanding capabilities of either type of hypersonic weapon give B-1B extra protection, which allows it to launch missiles from a more survivable distance. This is of particular relevance as opponents such as Russia and China continue to boost up their anti-access and area denial capabilities, including the introduction of the anti-aircraft weapons with even longer ranges. If you have reached this far in the video, we would like to thank you. Be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content like this. Back to the video. Climax. America has this hypersonic weapon and is now ahead of its rivals. Russia, with its three M22 Zircon naval hypersonic missiles, along with China's Xinkong-2, were in a lead, as far as the development of hypersonic missiles was concerned. America was ranked on the second spot before B-1B Lancer was tested for hypersonic missiles. There are some disagreements as far as Zircon and Air Launch Kinzhal are concerned while only the United States and Australia were credited with an air-breathing hypersonic weapon. Moreover, the two said leaders in the field are both known to have introduced other hypersonic weapons to service, including China's ground-launched DF-17 and Russia's silo-launched Avangard. America recently started the tests, and due to that, its rivals have a head start. If we talk about hypersonic weapons, America was behind China and Russia, but not anymore. B-1B Lancer will help the United States get back on top in no time. Do you guys think that there's still time left for the B-1B to serve as a launch platform for hypersonic missiles? Be sure to enjoy our video on why everyone is terrified of the A-10 Warthog.